ones that knew in fourth grade I wanted to be a teacher. I come from a long line of teachers. My mother's a teacher, my grandfather's a teacher. There's a lot of people in my life that are in education. And where I grew up, it's really respected as a job. And so it was just a clear choice that I wanted to be a teacher. I didn't know what I wanted to teach, but I knew that I wanted to go into education. In high school, I fell in love with science, so the two kind of merged and blended to be a perfect job. I want to be a science teacher. So in freshman year in college, uh, whether you're an education major or a biology major, you take the same classes. And at the end of the year, we had to sign up for either our, our, our sophomore classes. And sophomore in science is organic chemistry, the most dreaded of all chemistries. And I could either take organic chemistry, or as an education major, I could take intro to organic in the spring. And so inquiring the differences in the classes, someone told me this, you want to be a teacher? Well, those that can, do. And those that can't, teach. And it was the first time I heard this because I come from a long line of teachers and I kind of took it as an insult to my family. And then I was like, wait a minute, I, I want to do. I don't want to be the one that someone thinks that can't. I don't understand that. And so I kept my education major, but I went full-fledged into a bi degree. I actually finished it in three and a half years and I loved every class I took. I was like, I'm going to be a scientist. I'm going to solve the world's problems. I'm going to do, I'm going to do science. And so every summer I did an internship in science. Um, Dr. Andrew Turner at Clarion University, where I went, gave me the most phenomenal experience every summer working with him as a research assistant. And if you ever have the chance to be a research assistant for going into science, I know some of you are, it's one of the best experiences living at a field station. And I lived at this field station in Pine Tuning, which is off of Lake Erie, and I was blown away with the amount of science I was doing every summer. I was surrounded by all these people that just understood science, appreciated science, and were just as passionate about it as I was. I was like, this is what everyone meant. This is what doing science means. I get it, I love it. Every Wednesday night in my summer was a science seminar where different scientists in the region came and spoke about the research. And I was like, this is it, this is amazing. But every summer, I would talk to my college roommates who lived at the beach for the summer. Uh, they would ask me what I was doing. I'm like, oh, I'm doing research on zebra mussels. They're like, zebra mussels? Shouldn't you be in Africa? I was like, no, like mussels, like in the water, like mussels. And then my dad came to visit me once, and I was showing him his like, research, not a journal about crayfish. And he's like, I was telling him about my science experiments, and I showed him my, my field study, which literally was two football fields big. That's how big my experiment was. He's like, why do, you, why do people care about this? And then my heart was crushed. Because what I realized, unless I was in that little bubble of scientists, no one understood science. No one appreciated it. And I apparently was the only person who was passionate about it. So I you know, kept doing my research. And one summer, I was doing an experiment on snails. And I had to look eight hours of looking under at snails underneath the microscope. The most amazing experience ever, seeing snails hatch out of an egg. Um, for me, it was. And it was such a cool experience. They developed their shells in the eggs, guys. It is the cutest thing ever. And I looked around, and there was no one to share it with. And I was outside collecting data another day, and something really cool happened with my fish. And I looked around, and there was no one to share it with. And then I realized, I thought scientists were going to solve the world's problems, because they do science, right? Well, here's my world problem. No one cares about science. No one understands it. No one appreciates it. And no one's passionate about it, except for scientists. And that's a problem. So my problem that I was going to solve was changing that and being a teacher and bringing that passion to my classroom. And I will tell you, I do more science in my class than I would have been in any summer that I did research. I have my students more passionate about the world and the ocean and sustainability than I ever would have had just being behind a microscope looking at snail egg hatches, which, by the way, is the cutest thing ever. And, and I have my students at least appreciate the environment and appreciate everything, which I wouldn't have had that platform if I would have taken the other route. So I do feel that I, I fit my, my biggest potential. And I want to change that saying, those that can, do. But then it's their responsibility to teach it to others to do it better than them. Because let's be honest, if we don't grow and evolve, all the world's problems are not going to be solved unless someone figures out how to do it better. And those that can, maybe they make these. <laughs>